Hello everyone, welcome to the GOA Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on Oceanography and various other playlists that is related to Geography as well. So in this session on Oceanography, we are going to talk about something that is related to economy. It's called Blue Economy. So the concept of Blue Economy, its various attributes and India's role in Blue Economy is what we are going to learn in today's session. But before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do share the videos with others as well. So now, let's understand the concept of Blue Economy. So what is this Blue Economy all about? It's basically talking about the ocean-based economy, right? That's why it is blue economy. So this concept was introduced by a person called Gunter Pauli in his book, which was published in 2010. And what was the name of the book? The Blue Economy, 10 Years, 100 Innovations and 100 Million Jobs. That is where this concept was first time published in a book form. So what does it basically mean? It means the sustainable usage, that is sustainable usage of what? Oceanic resources for the economic growth, for improved livelihoods, for job creation and remember most importantly integrated it with oceanic ecosystem health as well. So it's not just talking about one way that you drain out from the ocean resources but also give back the ocean ecosystem health. So this is what we understand as the basic concept of blue economy. So what does it advocate? It advocates the greening of ocean development strategies for higher productivity as well as the conservation of ocean's health. Not just productivity or draining the resources, but at the same time conserving the ocean resources as well, ocean's health maintenance as well. So if you look at the World Bank report, according to that, the blue economy is defined as sustainable use of ocean resources for economic growth, improved livelihoods, jobs while preserving the health of the ocean ecosystem. That is one line definition. Then, according to European Commission, it defines all economic activities related to ocean, seas and coasts are called blue economy. It does not talk about details in terms of the conservation part. Then, the Commonwealth of Nations consider it as an emerging concept which encourages better stewardship for our ocean or blue resources. It means that we are understanding this blue economy or blue resources in a way that these resources are beneficial in one hand but also it should be sustainably used. That is where Sustainable Development Goal number 14 also talks about it. So it's part of the blue economy concept as well. Right? So let's elaborate this further more. So blue economy encompasses these following points. So what are the major points if you observe? First is the renewable energy, then you have fisheries, then you have maritime transport, then tourism, climate change and waste management. So how many points if you observe? These are six major points under blue economy. So sustainable renewable energy usage, then you have fisheries where you have sustainable fishing, then maritime transport. So over 80% of international goods and trades are transported by sea. So that's important in terms of blue economy. Then tourism part, right? That is important part in terms of job creation and economic growth. Climate change, remember blue carbon. So that is going to be mitigating the climate change and waste management, obviously, for the reduction of ocean pollution. Right. So blue economy emphasizes on integration as well of what development of ocean economy with social inclusion, then environmental sustainability and combination with innovative business models across the world. So this is going to be a new paradigm of looking into the ocean, not just for draining wealth from the ocean, but also making a particular environment in which we become in sync with the ocean human beings that is social inclusion with the ocean economy, right? So that's going to be one of the major points under blue economy. And remember, it is reflected in sustainable development goal number 14, which calls to conserve and sustainably use the ocean seas and marine resources for sustainable development, where this blue economy is going to be the major feature. Now the question is why there is a need for blue economy. So remember, Oceans are the greatest water bodies that we already know, three quarters of our surface, about 97% of our water and represents 99% of living area of the planet. That is important. And ocean protect the biodiversity. It keeps the planet cool. It absorbs 30% of the global CO2. So it's a biggest carbon sink, right? So if you know that oceans are the biggest carbon sink, so that's why it is one of the most important areas. And also, if you talk about global GDP, about 3 to 5% of global GDP is coming from oceans, right? So that's a big chunk of economy. So blue economy, through the sustainable use of these oceans, has a great potential. For what? For boosting the economic growth 
along with the opportunities for the income generation as well job creation as well but also at the same time protecting the ocean health that's important right and it can support food security and diversification of addresses to new resource creation for energy new drugs valuable chemicals protein food deep sea minerals and security as well so remember all these things are going to be part of this blue economy that's why there is a need for blue economy and remember it's going to be the next sunrise sector for us because of the alternative source of energy that we are going to get from this ocean right so that is why we are talking about the blue economy and that's what the need of blue economy is but remember it has its own challenges so what are the challenges for blue economy now these are the challenges listed here you can read it out threat of seaborne terror now remember piracy and armed robbery maritime terrorism illicit trade in crude oil arms drug human trafficking smuggling all these issues are rampant around the world and that's going to be the greatest threat for this blue economy then natural hazards so remember with climate change happening extremity growing every year what we are observing is tsunamis happening cyclones happening hurricanes typhoons and several natural hazards actually impacting the human life and property worth millions that's important then man made problem what we say is human made problem for that matter so oil spills climate change continue to risk the stability of maritime domain that we already know then impact of climate change that we have already seen and is going to be in future so sea temperature acidity threatening marine life coral bleaching habitat deconstruction and also communities that depend upon them they are going to be rendered landless if there is a seawater intrusion right so that is going to be a big problem then marine pollution so which we have already learned in the previous lecture in details if you have not watched the video on marine pollution do go to the playlist and watch that video on marine pollution in details right and over exploitation of marine resources is going to be the major threat right the illegal unreported and unregulated extraction of marine resources like many other resources that we observe around the world so these are the major challenge areas for blue economy that needs to be considered by the intergovernmental panels and also it should be taken care by the major agencies at state level as well at national level as well and at the global level as well then in context to india if we look at the blue economy what are the major points that we should consider blue economy presents india with unprecedented opportunity why because remember india is a huge peninsula it has oceans from three sides and to meet its national socio economic objectives to strengthen its connectivity with the neighbors blue economy is going to be one of the major thrust areas right so blue economy can help in focusing on livelihood generation achieving energy security building ecological resilience improving health and living standards of coastal communities so this point is very much important if you are going to write an answer on blue economy for indian context because these are the factors that are most important for india's development for india's future so blue economy would reinforce and strengthen the efforts of indian government and it will help to actually attain the sustainable development goal of what hunger and poverty eradication as well by 2030 so that's very much important then india has a huge coastline of about 7517 kilometers right that we already know and two union territories and covering nine states as well so and also it has exclusive eez that is about 2.2 million square kilometer area where you have specific requirement of economy being catered through ocean right so economic activities related to the ocean ocean exploration right so that is where we have a huge potential then marine service sector would serve as the backbone of its blue economy and help india become more than 5 trillion dollar economy by 2022 that is being expected but now this scenario could change a little due to the current economic situation during the covid times but definitely there is a potential here as well apart from that indian ocean is major conduit of trade as much as 80% of global oil trade happening through it that is one of the major areas of strength for indian ocean as well then better connectivity in the region will do one more thing it will significantly cut the transport cost and maritime wastage of resources as well if there is a amicable environment across the country across the nations in terms of geopolitics around indian ocean right so that's going to be one of the major thrust areas for blue economy for indian context as well that we are observing here then blue economy developments initiated by indian government or india for that matter so what are these so one of them is the sagarmala project 
that is strategic initiative for port led development through extensive uses of it enabled services for modernization of ports that is the major important point so sagar mala project if you observe it aims to develop inland waterways coastal shipping which will revolutionize the logistics the creation of millions jobs logistics support and reduce the cost that is being cost effective is one of the major aspects here and it focuses on the development of coastal communities the people their sustainable use of resources right that's important and apart from that there's something called o smart the umbrella scheme right what is this it has aim to regulate the use of ocean marine resources for sustainable development smart usage of resources right an integrated coastal zone management that we already know has been coming up since many years so iczm that we say focuses on conservation of coastal and marine resources apart from that coastal economic zones that is cez under sagar mala would become microcosm of blue economy that is important and india has national fisheries policy for promoting blue growth initiative that is important point here or key word here to remember that national fisheries policy are promoting this blue growth initiative which focus on what sustainable utilization of fisheries wealth from the marine and other aquatic resources that is going to be the major thrust area in terms of blue economy development in terms of indian government or indian initiative if you observe and finally if you look at the way forward remember india should look to adopt the gandhian approach that is supposed to be balancing the economic benefit with the sustainability right so catering to the future generation so remember the broader goal is to actually create an environment where we have growth employment and equity together with the protection of environment not just the employment or growth but also equity between that as well as the protection of environment at the same time so that is the way forward and then india must focus on marine icts and transport shipping and communication services creating knowledge hub creating universities for research and development and also effective response mechanism to address many humanitarian crises and issues where you have natural hazards impacting people across indian ocean if you see right because of the cyclones because of tsunamis so that is also strengthening the human part the human resources that we say and india should not look at its ocean as just water bodies but as a global stage for continued economic and social cultural dialogue remember through this ocean diplomacy if you say so it can be a great potential for india to actually stage a continued economic social and cultural dialogue across the world because it is part of 80% of the trade which carries through this indian ocean right especially in oil if you observe so it can be part of a major ocean diplomacy project this blue economy for india that could be a future or a way forward that we see here so now when we have discussed in details the various attributes facets of blue economy its role in india's growth and development and the way forward in the sessions to come we'll be coming up with more videos on different aspects of geography so stay tuned stay safe keep watching